Now let's take a look at converting from decimal. So this is a, the algorithm that we're going to use to convert any other base into the, the decimal number system. Now this is a little different uh, algorithm than what we looked at before converting to, to decimal, but it consists of two separate parts. Uh, the best way to do it is just to start with an example. <coughs> um, you're, going to t you're going to treat the uh, whole number portion separate from the fractional portion. So let's go ahead and let's do, let's do an example where we convert 11.375 base 10 into binary. Okay, so we have a decimal number and we're going into binary. And the way that we do this is we are going to convert the whole number portion separate from the fractional part and then what we'll do is we'll add them together <coughs> at the end. <coughs> we'll actually combine them together at the end. So the step is as follows. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do the whole number first. So we'll say step one is going to be the whole number. And what we do is you, t you start by taking the number and you divide it by the base that you're going into. So in this situation what I do is I take the whole number and I divide it by base two because I'm trying to convert into binary. And then what I want to do is I want to make a table where I re record the quotient and then also the remainder. So if you think about this, what we're going to do, let's, let's see how many times 2 goes into 11. Well, it goes in there 5 times and it's got a remainder of 1. What we then do is we record the remainder as the least significant bit. And then we take the number 5, the quotient, and we move it down and we divide that yet again by the base that we're going into. So then what we do is 2 goes into 5, two times with a remainder of one, and then this will now be recorded as the next LSB. So this would be LSB plus one. And then we continue this and we form the binary number that represents 11 decimal by continuing this process until we reach a stopping point. So let's go ahead and do two comes down and it's now divided by two. And it go, two goes into two one time and we have a remainder of zero, so that's the next bit. And then what happens is that whenever you reach a point where the quotient is a zero, so two goes into one zero times, that signifies that you are done. So in this situation right now, we are done. And the remainder then would be the most significant bit, most significant bit of our number. So in this situation, what we have is we have 1011. So now if we rewrite that in a row format, we have 1011 base 2, and that's equal to 11 base 10. And that's easy to check because that's just a straight conversion when we were looking at uh, the table going from hex into decimal end into binary. But that's the algorithm that we do. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to convert the fractional part. So now what I'm going to do is step two is the fractional component of my number <coughs> is 375. So I'm going to take this and, and I'm going to put a zero in front of it. I just want the actual fractional component. So what I do in this situation is I take that fractional part and I actually multiply it this time by the base that I'm going into. So since I'm converting into binary, I, I multiply by two. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to record the product, and in this situation it would be 0 0.75, and then what I want to do is I want to record the zeroth bit, or the zeroth value, or digit, okay? And what I mean by that is in this product I'm going to record the zero. So what I can do here is I can say, okay, that is going to be moved over here and I have a zero, okay? So notice what's interesting about this is that now I'm going to move just the fractional part down again. So I'm going to have 0 0.75. Notice that I just bring this down. I, if this had been a 1, I'd just leave it. I don't bring it down. I pat it with a leading 0. I just want the fractional component. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply that again. When I do that, this time what I'm doing is I'm forming the binary number over here, but this time this is going to be the most significant bit. So this will be the bit on the left side of this number. So now let's look at this one. We move down the fractional component. We have 2 times 0.75. So in this situation, I have 1.5. Now what I have is I have a 1, and that 1 will move over to here, and that'll be the MSB effectively minus 1. So I'm forming this number as it goes to the right. 
And I continue, now this is where a lot of people get tripped up. I want to bring down just the fractional component, so I bring down just 0.5. So in this situation, I multiply that by 2, and I'm left with 1.00. And in this case right here, I have 1, and I have now reached a part where I know that I'm done because the fractional component is 0. So there's no sense going anymore because if I brought that down, I would just simply start uh, recording zeroth values that are 0, 0, 0, 0, and those represent trailing zeros, which we don't need to continue. We don't need to do anymore. So now what I can do is I can write this as 0, 1, 1, base 2, and I can say that that is equal to 0 0.375 base 10. Now if I want to combine these numbers together, what I do is I take the whole number and the fractional number, and I write the entire binary number as 1011.011 base 2. And that is equal to my original 11.375. Okay, when you do this, when you convert this from decimal into binary, one of the things that can happen is if you have irrational numbers, <coughs> the product right here can go indefinitely. So you can be in a situation where you just continue and continue and continue, and you never actually reach this ending point of 0, 0 as the fraction. So one of the things that you can do is you can specify what we call the fractional accuracy. <clears throat> and this is useful. Somebody might state that I want you to convert decimal into binary with four bits of fractional accuracy and perhaps no rounding. And what that means is that you're just going to go until you get four bits, and then you're going to stop. And so if you had an irrational number here that was never going to end, and you were just generating you know, hundreds and hundreds of bits, you would look at how much accuracy you actually wanted in the conversion, and from then you would just stop when you got there. The rounding has to do with whether you round the number up or you round the number down. So for this situation, typically what we do is we just stop and don't round. A round would be something where I had, let's say, zero number like this, and I said, I want four bits of fractional accuracy. So I would stop right there. Well, you could look at this and say, I want to round that up to, round that up, that up, that up, and go to one, zero, zero, zero. In a situation where you rounded, that would be okay, but in what we're going to do is we're just going to drop it. So we just go until we have that number, and then we stop. Okay, so that's the algorithm for, to convert binary to decimal. So let's look at using this algorithm one more time, and let's convert from, oh, excuse me, that's from decimal into binary. So let's take a look at now converting a decimal number into hexadecimal. So let's take an example of, let's see, let's go, this is going to be 254.655 base 10, and I want to go into hex. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say part one, this is going to be the whole number, and I'm going to take 254, and I'm going to divide it by the base that I'm going into, which is 16, and I'm going to record the quotient, and I'm going to record the remainder. So let's take a look. So 16 goes into 254, it goes in there 15 times, and it has a remainder of 14. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to record this as the least significant. I'm going to put least significant digit. It's not a bit. It's a digit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring 15 down, and I'll divide that by 16. It goes in there 0 with a remainder of 15. I know right there that I'm done. And I can sit there and say, okay, now I've got the least significant digit and the most significant digit. There was only two of them. If I want this in hex, I have to remember what these codes were. So I have 14 in decimal is equal to E in 16, base 16, and 15 is equal to F in base 16. So you do all the math in decimal, and then what you do is, at the end, you do the substitution, and you just have to know what the first 16 characters of hex are. Actually, all you really need to know is A through F. <clears throat> so if this is the least significant, I would write this as E and then F, and what I would have is F E base 16 is equal to 254 base 10. So now I've done the whole number part, and let's take a look now at the fractional part. And I'm going to take 0 0.655, and this time I'm going to multiply by the base that I'm going into, and I'm going to record the product, and I'm going to record the zeroth position bit. And so if we take a look at this, we're going to have 16 times 0 0.655, so that comes out to be a number of 10.48. 
And there was one thing that I forgot to specify in this. <clears throat> what we want to do is this is an irrational number, so it's going to go for a long time. I want to stop at three bits of fractional accuracy. Fractional accuracy. And that'll allow me to just stop at some point and say, say we have enough accuracy, we can, we can end this conversion. So I, what I have here is I have 16 times 0 0.655, and I got 10. 0.48. So I recorded the zeroth position, and that's going to be that's going to be 10, and that is going to be my most significant digit. And then what I do is I bring down the fractional component. So I have 0 0.48. I multiply that again by 16, and I'm going to get a number that is 7.68. And I'm going to record this right here. So I'm going to record that, and that'll be my next uh, that'll be my next least significant. So I have 10 and 7 so far. Then I'm going to bring down to here, I'm going to bring 0 0.68, and then I'm going to multiply that by 16, and I get 10.88, and then I record the 10. So now what I have is, I have my three digits, so I'm done. So I can actually now, this being my least significant digit, so I am done, even though that I didn't reach the 0, 0. The reason I was done is I've reached my fractional accuracy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert these to their hex symbols. So recall that 10 was equal to A, 7 is just 7, and 10 is equal to A. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to say the number is A, 7, A, base 16, and that is equal to 0 0.655, base 10. So I finally, I take my two numbers, and I want to combine them, and my complete conversion now is F, E, dot, A, 7a base 16 is equal to 254.655 base 10. Notice that that has an accuracy issue with it. So it's not exactly equal to 254.655 base 10. We stopped at three digits worth of accuracy. But that's okay. That's how we specified the conversion. Okay. So that is how you convert uh, from decimal into any other base.